Microsoft has updated the Windows 11 recommended system requirements. This comes to us courtesy of Microsoft's own blog. This is a little <clears throat> update on Windows 11 minimum system requirements and the PC Health Check app. If you guys didn't remember, the PC Health Check app was this super basic tool that pretty much just said, hey, you're not eligible without really telling you exactly why, which led to a fair bit of confusion in the Windows community, which is basically the PC user community. Although actually, uh, I actually hosted a Facebook live audio room earlier that ended up being a fantastic discussion with the one and only Wendell from Level 1 nice. Techs, with the topic being Linux then, now, and the future. And he oh. and I both agreed for different reasons that desktop computing in the future could easily change over to Linux. Um, or at least I think I convinced him. I think I convinced him of my rationale behind it. And we can, I don't know, Luke, if you want to throw that in the doc, we can talk about that a little bit more later. Sure. But yeah. getting Wendell's contribution side is probably really important. I, I think it's pinned on our Facebook page. It's a live audio room. Anyway, Microsoft made a blog post today outlining their results from a revisit to the Windows 11 system requirements. And there's some good takeaways here. And there's also some ones that are going to be really disappointing for a lot of people who bought computers not that long ago. What they concluded is that the original list of compatible 64-bit processors, um, blah, 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 is the right minimum system requirements to deliver on the principles they established for the best user support. So they're basically saying after further inspection, we were, we were correct. They did, however, identify that there was a group of PC models that met the principles while running on 7th gen rather than 8th gen or higher CPUs. So Intel's Core 7820HQ, okay, but this is only select devices that shipped with modern drivers based on declarative, componentized, hardware-supported apps design principles, including the Surface Studio 2, and Intel's Core X series and Xeon W series. So those are the only 7th gen CPUs that they found met the requirement. So to summarize, this means that if you have a 1st gen Ryzen CPU, which uh, last time I checked was really not that long ago. I mean, when did the Ryzen 1600X launch? 2017. That, that, that was only... Is that right? Yep. April 2017, just four years ago, Windows 11 is not for you. And if you have a 7th gen CPU that isn't one of the ones that we just listed, so basically most of them, you are plumb out of luck. Specific Ryzen 2000 series CPUs are unsupported as well. So specifically, this would be ones like the 2200G and 2400G. If I recall correctly, those are not Zen 2 based. Those are like Zen Plus or something like that. Are they Zen 1 or what type of Zen are they? Blah, 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 based on the Zen architecture. So they were named 2000 series, but effectively they weren't. I'm really glad that AMD is cleaning up this problem with their processor naming scheme now. For a while, they had uh, mobile CPUs that sounded like they were a generation further along than they actually yeah. were. And it looks like as we move into 5000 and 6000 series, that should no longer be the case going forward. I really hope they can keep that tidy. There was really no excuse for how stupid that was. Now their reasoning for not adding more CPUs or older ones to the list was due to reliability, security, and compatibility. Um, sorry, what? They didn't provide any sort of granularity to these results though. Like do their, their crash numbers apply to all seventh gen CPUs or like, so here, here basically this is an imager capture of, of what they mean by that. So reliability means devices that do not meet the minimum system requirements had 52% more kernel mode crashes. Uh, sort of raises a question, who is that on? Is that on, is that on Microsoft or is that on the, the device, the person who didn't upgrade their computer? Devices that do meet the minimum system requirements had a 99.8% crash free experience. Okay. 
Security. Windows 11 raises the baseline, blah, 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 etc., etc. Compatibility. People continue to increasingly use their PCs for video conferencing, productivity, and gaming. And they set the minimum system requirements to align with some of the most commonly used apps. Well, one issue I have with that is that basically just sounds like Microsoft wants to hand over every user who only needs to do basic word processing and email to Google. Okay, Microsoft says, why don't you just buy a Chromebook then? To which people might reply, I guess I will. So that's interesting. Oh, I have man. been trying so hard to find this audio room. And I don't know if I'm just too young for Facebook now or what. But as far as I can tell, it's just gone. Oh, um, if you message Jono, maybe he can either fix that or link you to where to find it. According to The Verge, Microsoft also clarified that they will only be enforcing their system requirements if you are upgrading from Windows 10 to Windows 11. This will not be enforced on clean installations of Windows 11. So the good news from all of this is that Microsoft is basically sticking to its guns saying, for the best Windows 11 experience, you really should have a newer computer. But if you install Windows 11 clean from just from a USB thumb drive, nothing will prevent you from installing it on an older machine. So apparently this functionality is designed primarily for businesses to evaluate Windows 11, and they will allow people to upgrade to it at their own risk in this fashion, but the company can't guarantee driver compatibility and overall system reliability. Microsoft will not be recommending or advertising this method of installing Windows 11 to consumers. So that was a lot of doom and gloom and bad sounding stuff at the beginning of this segment, but overall I think this is um about the best we could have expected now this is probably my tinfoil hat kind of coming out here a little bit but i think the big the big takeaway here is not the method by which microsoft is allowing windows 11 to be installed on older hardware but rather the specific users that Microsoft is locking out of Windows 11. And that would be people that are taking advantage of loopholes in the Microsoft free upgrade from older operating systems system that allow them to sort of um, launder a pirated copy of Windows by just upgrading it through multiple versions of Windows. Um, with that yeah. said, so, so it sounds like they're trying to shed a lot of that dead weight that upgraded their their cracked versions of Windows 7 to Windows 10 because that would be a group of users that is running older hardware. With that said, I can't see how anything would prevent you from taking that drive, either installing it in a newer system or cloning it over to a newer system and then performing the upgrade. So yep. there will still be ways to work around it, but maybe it's just going to be a little more difficult. Overall, because Windows 11 is a bit of a nothing burger in terms of performance upgrades from what we saw, at least for gaming, uh, there's no real reason for you to be worried about this in any way because you can still install it clean if you really want to. And the probably the best way to pirate Windows is the is the official way, which is to just say, no, I don't have a license key when you're installing it, and then just run it forever and not be able to change your desktop background. Oh, except you can if you just right click on a picture and set as desktop background. That's that's probably the, the easiest way to, to pirate Windows these days. So nothing prevents you from continuing to do that. It's just that Microsoft isn't going to condone you running older hardware. So, all right. Sounds good, and I guess I don't have to worry too much about any of it. Um, also, because I, I actually, I finally activated the Windows install on my home desktop, Luke. I, I did too. I don't know if you know about that. Oh, did you really? Why I don't did you remember do why. I, I honestly don't remember. It was quite a while ago, though. I think um, I was watching a movie full screen, and I was just kind of tired of looking at the watermark. And I was just like, how much does this cost? You know what? Fine. <laughs> <laughs> just... I feel like I, I like needed to for some reason or something. 
Um, oh, okay. I was on a call. I was on a work call, not with an employee. It was an external. I don't remember who it was, but it was like an external person. And I was screen sharing and they like mentioned it. And I was like, yep, that doesn't sound very pro. <laughs> so I fixed it. Yep, that makes sense. Uh, Jake Heaver is in Floatplane Chat says, DIY upgraders are such a small segment of the market. They don't care about us. They're drawing a line to maximize the amount of average users they can sell a new OEM license to. Honestly, I don't even think Microsoft is after selling new OEM licenses. No, I don't it's, think so. It's, it's, not, it's not that many. I mean, it's a lot to be clear. Like here, let's let's pull up let's pull up Windows 10 on Newegg, okay? Here we go. Here we go. All right? Windows 10, this one this one right here is the number one best seller in operating systems. That makes sense. Whoa. 1382 reviews. Now, that's a lot. You know, like if I were to use if I were to extrapolate those numbers based on the um, uh, based on the numbers that I see for like the ABCs of gaming on Amazon, like how many we sold versus how many reviews those are. I mean, that's 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 tens of thousands, maybe into hundreds of thousands of units, probably. Um, especially when you factor in that there's other avenues by which Microsoft can directly sell Windows to users, and there's other stores other than Newegg. But in the grand scheme of things, okay, let's go look for a Ryzen 5600X CPU, okay? So let's go take one, probably the most popular, yep, there it is, the most popular desktop CPU, holy smokes, 1,766 reviews for this thing. Something here doesn't compute. There's only like what maybe so we got which which windows 10 so we got 64 bit oem we got the retail one with the thumb drive that's got another 300 reviews okay there's pro so that's another 13 oh wow no these are combined home and pro here 1382 uh there here's another boxed one here's a like a retail one uh, this is combined with this one though oh that's hilarious 376 those are the same this 285 here Oh, whoops, you guys can't see what I'm looking at here. Whoops, sorry. These two both have 285, so those appear to be a combined one as well. Um, something doesn't compute. Clearly, a lot of people are buying the most popular CPU and then not buying Windows. Um, so even the OEM market, what I'm trying to say, is not as big of a deal as you might think. What, what Microsoft is trying to do is they're trying to drive overall sales of new computers forward because that's something that Microsoft stands to benefit from in the long term. They want people, when people buy a new computer, they want them buying a new Windows computer and they want that happening on a reasonably uh, frequent basis because it's good for their partners. What's good for the goose is good for the ganders. And Microsoft has taken that approach for a very, very, very long time. So, yeah. I, I, I'm glad they're leaving us the capability to do it. I mean, I, I, th I suspect they, they realized that there would have been, people would have found a hacky way around it anyway. Uh, so I'm glad they're just kind of accepting it. But I also understand why they want people to have a good experience on Windows 11, especially if a lot of their branding around Windows 11 is going to be, you know, this is the most reliable Windows ever. This is the most secure Windows ever.